There are few things we consider a universal law. We consider gravity one, a concept so unshakable and widely understood that we compare other such facts to it, saying it's as ineffable as the laws of gravity. But do we truly understand gravity, down to the smallest detail? Or is gravity a misshapen piece of a larger, more mysterious puzzle? Uncover more secrets of the universe by clicking like, subscribe, and hitting the bell icon so that you don't miss what we find next. In the 17th century, French astronomer Charles Messier unknowingly discovered galaxies. Since then, galaxies have been the subject of endless fascination and study, and along with them, dark matter. Despite being such a popular buzzword, there is still little known about dark matter. While dark matter is the current standard model of cosmology, there are boundless mysteries surrounding the supposed elemental particle. Along with these mysteries comes our current understanding of gravity, which doesn't necessarily support dark matter. So which is it? Do we not really understand dark matter or gravity? Or could it be that we have a flawed theory of both? In 1933, Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky stumbled upon something concerning during his study of galaxy clusters. While observing these clusters, Zwicky noted that the total mass of matter didn't account for the total mass he calculated based on the motion of the galaxies held together by gravitational force. Either he'd discovered that gravity was broken, or he'd stumbled upon something else. Without any reason to doubt a law so unshakable as gravity, his calculations led to the proposal of a new type of matter, matter that was unseen. Zwicky closely studied the Coma Galaxy Cluster, where he calculated its mass by observing the galaxies at the cluster's edge. He then carefully drew up the mass of the Coma Galaxy using its brightness and the number of galaxies it contained. When he had finished, he had a true puzzle on his hands. While the two values should have matched to the very decimal point, they weren't even close. Despite perfect calculation and repeated study, Zwicky could never get the two values of mass to match. The only option available to him was matter he couldn't see. Thus, the concept of dark matter was born. No matter his brilliance, such a concept couldn't be held up by one man's research. Thirty years later, innovative pioneer of astronomy Vera Rubin would come to a conclusion supporting Zwicky's theory. When Rubin began her work at Carnegie Institution of Washington in the Department of Terrestrial Magnetism in 1965, she put herself on the path to becoming the first female observer at the Palomar Observatory, making history. And while she was at it, she would discover something profound. Despite setting out to avoid more controversial areas of astronomy, such as quasars and galactic motion, Rubin took to analyzing galaxy rotation curves. To do so, Rubin created a graph of orbital speed of the visible stars and gases in a galaxy compared to the radial distance from the center. In our solar system, we've observed that the farther a planet lies from the sun, the slower it makes its orbit. Mathematically, orbital speeds are inversely proportional to the square root of the radial distance from the sun. With the help of her research partner Kent Ford, Rubin discovered that the stars in the galaxy she studied behaved just the opposite. To her astonishment, and that of the astronomy community, she found that the outer regions of the galaxies rotates at the same or increased speeds of the inner regions. Considering the known distribution of visible matter in these galaxies, this should have been impossible. This is where Zwicky's theory of existence of unseen matter came into play. It seemed that the dark matter was a matter of fact, based on multiple studies and observations. It was supported again in the 1980s with the observation of gravitational lenses of the background objects of galaxy clusters, and then once more in the 1990s when the measurements of cosmic microwave background and large-scale structure formation of the universe once more called for the existence of unseen matter. Dark matter became one of the most important structures in cosmology and astronomy. It is thought that dark matter accounts for 27% of the observable universe, but the problem with an unseeable matter is finding it. Dark matter is incredibly difficult to locate. It does not interact with electromagnetic radiation. 
We can only infer its presence by observing effects on visible matter. Currently, particle physics does not even contain an elementary particle representation of dark matter. While scientists are confident it exists, theories of dark matter are still being developed as they attempt to understand it. Thus, the hunt continues, with several candidates for its model stepping to the plate. At present, some of the most promising dark matter study models are as follows. Weakly interacting massive particles, or WIMPs, axions, massive compact halo objects, or machos, and, finally, sterile neutrinos. The investigation of dark matter particles also continues at the Large Hadron Collider through experiments such as the Super Cryogenic Rare Event Search with Superconduction Thermometers, the Lux Zeppelin Dark Matter Experiment, Dark Matter Maps from Dark Energy Survey, the Axion Dark Matter Experiment, and finally, the Xenon Dark Matter Experiment. While these experiments offer cutting-edge new data, they have yet to show anything concrete. It could simply be that dark matter is elusive as its name suggests, or it could be that it does not actually exist. But if it doesn't, how do we explain the phenomenon observed by Zwicky and Rubin? Could it be that we have a flaw somewhere in our understanding of Newtonian gravity? At present, there are several alternative explanations to these observations, all without the inclusion of dark matter. The current accepted model is the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Model, also known as LCDM. However, there are others offering an alternative to dark matter, such as the AQUAL and MOND models. Proposed by Mordechai Milgram in 1983, the modified Newtonian dynamics involves the modification of Newtonian gravity in application to galaxy rotation curves. Newton's laws are some of the most tested and proved theories in the world, and when it comes to high acceleration systems like our solar system, they remain completely valid. However, the Mond theory assumes a threshold acceleration below which there is a transition from Newtonian to Mond regimes, which modifies gravitational force laws in an extremely low acceleration environment. This theory spawned Aquil, Proposed by both Milgram and Jacob Bekenstein in 1984, Aquil stands for a quadratic Lagrangian, a theory which proposes a modified Newtonian gravity Lagrangian to a Lagrangian involving a general function and the threshold to acceleration term. Though the Aquil model couldn't explain the observed gravitational lensing by galaxies, it offered the thrilling idea of tweaking Newtonian gravity, which may solve one of the largest puzzles in cosmology and astrophysics. So how does this differ from the LCDM model? The difference can be found in the galaxy rotation curve, the inner, which is rising, and the outer, which is increasing or almost saturated. These correspond to the motion of stars in the inner and outer regions of the galaxies. While the LCDM model attributes the galaxy rotation curves to the presence of dark matter, the Aquil says the transition caused by galaxy dynamics accounts for the difference between these inner and outer portions of the rotational curve and that the small kink in the curve is likely due to the slight change in the velocity distribution between inner and outer stellar motions. It doesn't stop there, however. There is a third newer study by K. H. Che, Che's study focuses on how modified gravity and dark matter differently explain the inner and outer rotation curves. Che studied 152 galaxies recorded within the Spark database in order to determine the theoretical possibilities of distinguishing dark matter and modified gravity from one another. To accomplish this, Che carefully investigated the statistical relationship between the observed centripetal acceleration of particles in motion and the expected Newtonian acceleration from the distribution of baryonic matter in the recorded galaxies. He found that the dark matter model showed a significantly higher scatter than the actual spark data showed, which supported the Aqua model much better than the widely accepted LCDM model. He also noted that only in application of cosmic mean external field did the Aqua model of modified gravity predict both the inner and outer rotational curves correctly. Che's study has presented a detailed analysis of Aquil and how the model may provide a new and exciting understanding of gravity. 
Whether or not dark matter or warped gravity is to blame for the discrepancies we've discovered in our universe, scientists still have to puzzle out. In the meantime, however, the search for dark matter continues, while researchers like Che continue to pull multiple theories together in the search for truth. Join us next time as we continue to uncover the mysteries of the cosmos. Like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss a thing.